Welcome! In this video I'll show you how to solve problem 1.9 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. This would introduce a very important concept that will be the probability current. Now, during quantum mechanics 1, we are going to encounter it every now and then. It's not going to be all that common, but as we go into more and more complex matters in quantum mechanics, and especially later in quantum field theory, for example, the probability current will pop up quite often. So it is good that we know what it is and what it stands for. Um, okay, so the problem states, let P A B be the probability of finding the particle in the range between A and B at some time T. So first we want to show that the time derivative of that probability is going to be J A T minus J B T, with J being this monster right there. And J is precisely um, the probability current. So yeah, we are basically going to derive the probability current here. All right, and I'm going to tell you more about it once we derive it, um, but let's go for it. So what we are doing is saying, okay, what happens if we have the probability of finding the particle between some part A and B, right? Let's say that we have, I mean, just gonna make something up. Um, we have some wave function that is something like this, and this is A and this is B, right? So we want to know what is the probability of finding the particle between A and B, okay? That's PAB. And now we want to know how does it change in time because perhaps this particle is moving. Perhaps in a few seconds, it's going to be something like this, right? Perhaps later it's going to be something like what I have in red. So basically it moved to the right. Okay, so perhaps that might be happening if our particle or is moving or if something is changing here. So we want to understand um, what's going on. So, okay the probability of finding the particle between A and B, we know that this is given by the integral between A and B of psi squared dx. Okay, that shouldn't be anything new. So if we want to know the time derivative of this, we simply take the time derivative of this integral. Now you may be like, wait, but how do we do it? This is crazy. Um, well, we can do a few things. First of all, let's uh, write what this thing here is, right? The probability density is simply psi conjugate psi dx. And now since this integral is an integral over x, but this derivative is a derivative over time, we can, you know, just change the order, leave the integral outside and take the time derivative of this product. So let's do that. So the time derivative of the product will be the time derivative of the first part, which is psi conjugate times the second part, which is psi, plus the first one, which is psi conjugate times the time derivative of the second one, which is psi. Okay, um, how do we proceed now though? Because well, what is the time derivative of psi or psi conjugate? Well, we actually do know what it is because we know According to the Schrodinger equation, we know that minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative of psi with respect to x is equal to i h bar times the time derivative of, of psi dt. And of course, the same thing is valid for the complex conjugate, except that, of course, uh, it's going to be complex. Actually, let me just show you. So for the complex conjugate, it's the complex of this, right? The complex conjugate of this. So we get... Oh, I'm missing the square. Uh, psi conjugate and minus. That, that minus is very important. Um, so d psi conjugate dt. Okay, so that is what we have to now plug into this blue section. So let's do it like that. Um, okay, so plugging it in, we get the integral between a and b. And now we have. So this is going to be uh, this time derivative, which is actually we haven't isolated it yet. So maybe let's do that first. So d psi dt. So we have to multiply by i and we get a minus sign. So we also have to multiply by a minus. So we get i and we divide by h bar. So we get i h bar divided by 2m d squared psi dx squared. And um, similarly for uh, psi conjugate, we get d psi conjugate dt. This is minus i h bar over 2m d squared 
psi conjugate dx squared. Okay, so now let's plug it in. So we have i h bar divided by 2m d squared psi dx squared. Oh, this is conjugate, so this is minus. Um, and now we multiply by psi. And then we have plus psi conjugate. And now I need to move my camera a little bit. There we go. And now we multiply by i h bar over 2m d squared psi dx squared. And of course, all of this dx. And this, of course, is simply um, the time derivative of PAB. Okay, so this may not look any simpler just yet, but we will use a very, very cool and very important trick that we will use throughout everything that is quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics one and two and quantum field theory and all the way up to infinity. Okay, so we will always use this. So first of all, I'm just going to factor out. So this is, I'm just going to make things a little bit cleaner. So nothing crazy happening here. I'm going to write this first because I like the positive thing to be first. Okay, um, you know me, I just like it like that way. Um, so first is psi conjugate d squared psi dx squared minus d squared psi conjugate dx squared psi dx. Okay, so now that we have this, we are going to do something very important. So we have the integral of something that has derivatives of the same coordinate that we are integrating. And notice that we have second derivative of one thing, no derivative of the other thing, and two derivatives of the other thing, one derivative of, you know, the first thing. So this kind of looks like we are taking, right, like if we had the uh, the derivative with respect to x, I, I don't know if I said time derivative before, if I did, I'm sorry, I meant x derivative. This looks like if we had the x derivative of something like psi conjugate d psi dx minus d psi conjugate dx psi. Why do I think of this, right? And what am I, am I trying to achieve? I'm trying to find some total derivative, right? That will be able to, a total derivative that's going to replace what I have here, because then I will have the total derivative, uh, basically the integral of a derivative. And we that's simply evaluating at the endpoints, right? So that would be very, very easy. So I'm seeing if that is possible. I know that it is because things that look like this, right? Something times two times the time derivative minus two times time derivative times, times the other one, right? Like this, like psi psi conjugate with two time derivatives, one has it, one doesn't. This occurs very often. That's why the first time around, don't worry. I mean, you won't think of it. Very few people, especially students, think of it the first time around, but eventually you do once you've seen it enough. So uh, what I did is basically just r remove one derivative in each one of these. And now let's just check. I know that it's going to be correct because I've done it, but let's check, right? So if we take this derivative, we get d psi conjugate dx times d psi dx, and then plus psi conjugate d squared psi dx squared. So notice that we already have this first part. But now we have this additional one, which we hope will cancel out with an additional term from the second part. Then we have minus d squared psi conjugate dx squared times psi, which is this part. And then we have an additional part, which is minus d psi conjugate dx d psi dx, which cancels out with the first one. So indeed, we end up with precisely what we started out with. So, you know, there we go. <laughs> uh, we have found, uh, we know that this is indeed uh, correct. So we can go ahead and plug it in, which is basically just taking those squares away and putting the total derivative in front. So total derivative right there. So d, d, x. Okay, that's great. So now that we have it, um, we can evaluate this integral very easily. So this i h bar over 2m. And then we have, let's see, we have this thing, psi 
conjugate d psi dx minus d psi conjugate dx times psi. And we still have to evaluate this between a and b. Now, something we can do is take out the minus sign. So just factor out by a minus, just to make sure that we arrive at the convention. And what we have in here, right? So basically this thing right there is precisely without the minus sign, right? So not including that. So I will rewrite it just to make sure. So that is precisely what we call the probability current. So this, it is J of X comma T, which is simply going to be Psi D Psi conjugate DX minus Psi conjugate D Psi DX. And all of this multiplied by I H bar over 2M. And now we will evaluate the expression that we have. So D P A B D T, this is going to be minus J between evaluate at B, right? Minus, but there's another minus, so we get plus, so plus J between A and T. So that is the result that we wanted for part A. Now let's talk a little bit about what this current is, what are its units. So what this is, it is basically a flow of probability, right? As we mentioned before, how much probability is going in and out of this particular area. So it, this basically tells us, yeah, how is the particle moving, right? Is it going to spend more time, quote unquote, time inside of this area or not, right? So it really allows us to understand the movement of the particle in this situation. And yeah, it, it's also going to allow us uh, to see whether or not that probability is being conserved, for example, which is something that's going to be very important later on. Um, so this has a lot of very interesting applications. And of course, since the probability current is a probability, right? probability doesn't have any units, so the current is going to be the change of probability through time. So of course, the units of J have to be uh, second to the minus one, or, or time to the minus one, right? You could do hours or something, but second or time to the minus one. So that's going to be the unit of that. Um, so of course, it's important to note, as they say here, if the probability is increasing, right, if we calculate it and it is increasing, of course, it means that there's going to be more probability flowing into the region than out, as they say here. Okay, so part B now says find the probability current for the wave function in the previous problem. Now, what was the probability function in the previous problem? Let me just check. Um, so the wave function in the previous problem was um, square root of lambda, which we got from normalization, e to the minus lambda times the absolute value of x times e to the minus i omega t. But all of this, which is the kind of x dependent part, we can just call f of x. Just to make notation simpler, you could leave it like this and explicitly calculate it. Um, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's annoying, that is boring. So let me take this closer, by the way, so that we can have the formula. So if we want to calculate the, the probability current, we just need to, well, do what the formula says. So the probability current is going to be I H bar over 2M and then Psi. And Psi is simply, so Psi of X is simply F of X times e to the minus i omega t. I'm using this compact notation to make it quicker, right? Calling this f of x. And then we have the derivative of the conjugate wave function, okay? So which one is the, con what is the con conjugate wave function? The conjugate wave function is simply going to be lambda e to the minus lambda x. That doesn't change, right? All of this, by the way, is still simply f of x. So this is simply f of x e to the i omega t. Okay, so if we take its derivative uh, with respect to x, this simply gives us whatever the derivative of this is, right? It gives us df of x dx e to the i omega t, right? <laughs> we don't even have to calculate it. So we multiply here by df of x dx e to the i omega t. So the exponents, they cancel each other out. And then we have the second part of the formula, which is minus, now comes this thing, right? Which will be f of x e to the i omega t times the derivative of this, which will be, as we saw before, the f of x, right? 
why do I say as we saw before and I don't calculate it? Because it's the exact same thing as the conjugate. The only part that changed is the exponent, but the exponent doesn't depend on x, so the derivative is unchanged. So we get d f of x dx e to the minus i omega t. So again, the exponents cancel out, the, ex the exponentials there, bam, and we get the exact same thing twice, right? We get this thing here and the same thing here but with a minus sign so we get zero so that means there is no flow of probability okay um so yeah that's uh, what this probability current is that's how we use it so i hope that this video was useful to you if it was please make sure to give a like on the video comment and subscribe and maybe even consider checking out my patreon so i'll see you in the next video thank you very much for watching